So Oceano Co. 21 has some explaining to do. Uh, I, I'm in disbelief and I don't want to believe it. On one hand, I can see how an author would want to turn a show like Oceano Co. off the path of revenge, given the Tokyo Blade arc would be an opportunity to do so and let the guy have a happy-go-lucky life. But it doesn't seem like the author wants Aqua to have a happy-go-lucky life. So the reveal that there's a 99.8% chance this is this dude's brother. So there's already an out. There's a 0.2% chance that they aren't actually related, and that's why the dad seemingly being dead is fine because the real dad's still out there. Sure. I feel like that's very unlikely. That statistic is enough to pretty much guarantee they are half-brothers. But the idea that who his dad and his mom are apparently had double suicide, I mean, I don't believe it. Either he faked it, or the man in that picture was not his dad, and there's another man in the picture, and it's just a whole combination of worms where real dad's out there still, something happened with those two, and that's the real dad. But then it makes the question, why the hell did he do that, and what the f- I have so many questions. I have full live reactions over on Patreon if you want to see me just try to unravel this mess in real time over there exclusively. So, I don't know what's more. This is what's brilliant about this reveal. They reveal that he's dead, but your natural gut is no. I don't believe it. I feel like Akane is just going to randomly come out Batman style with the cape and cowl and just solve this for us. Because what the hell are, is Aqua supposed to Aqua is so defeated he doesn't know how to be a happy human without the path of murder revenge on his mind. That's how broken this kid is. The thing about the double suicide is it would be very hard to fake. Because we didn't really read a full ass report. They, I imagine they found a body for both of them, but it's, you know, it could be very easy to make a double very brutal and, you know, maybe, I don't know, like the face was so messed up and maybe he dropped a few teeth that it could match up DNA. I don't know. But I feel like that would be very difficult if they're so confident. I don't know. All I know is there are cases, even real life, where double suicides have actually been fake. Like, there have, there have been cases where people have faked it. And I've even seen stories do it. So it's like, I'm willing, but I feel like the most obvious answer would be that it, it can't be, right? Because here's the thing. If we are going the route that the dad isn't the one who killed I... I feel like it eliminates a little too much of the reason the revenge is so personal. Because yeah, Aqua could still have revenge and want to go after someone who just obviously killed his mom. That's totally understandable and believable. But I feel like the personal of the dad's a whore and apparently just bangs everyone in the entertainment industry and, uh, you know, kills, kills people afterwards, I think is a much more powerful impact for an endgame. So I think you gotta commit to that, because if you remove it, I don't know, it'd be like the One Piece just being the friendship that we made along the way, you know, it just, it would be a little too off. So, the dad potentially being someone else is completely on the table. Maybe I'm coping, maybe there's some manga readers in the background laughing, but that's fine, I don't, I don't give a shit. To me, it's like, despite Aqua feeling defeated, to me it's like, I don't know. All I know is if you have enough money, people can be bribed, reports can be altered, who the hell knows? For all we know, it was some money was paid to make it look like he was also found dead, or it's a different guy. All I know is that they're saying he's dead and I'm refusing to believe it, but that's how you know you got a good murder mystery on your hands. You think you're finally getting the answers you want, only for it to come in swinging and half bro is just like, well, let's get drunk together. <laughs> Surprisingly though, that was actually the smallest part of the episode, it was like first five minutes give or take. The rest was all Ruby centric, and I have mentioned it, you know, it makes sense why Ruby was pushed to the back burner this season, given the Tokyo Blade arc. But it is nice that they've reintroduced her and her group, and you know, kind of like the idea of them, you know, wanting a million subs. Basically got the Mayanaka punch of the anime season, in terms of they're like, they're trying, but it's very difficult. Uh, and, you know, I like the fact that they even threw out real statistics, like the fact that, hey, even getting to 20,000, like, even, like, 0.1% don't get there, and it's true. I don't know the exact number, but, yeah, it is true. Like, a majority of people who try to do anything YouTube won't even get past 1,000, let alone 10 or 20, 30,000. So it's like, I like that, but obviously they do need to get going. And just in general, I like the banter between the group. It was nice to kind of get back in the saddle with them. 
But the thing that I enjoyed the most about all that was how Ruby kind of stole the show here. So there's two moments that I really liked with her. One was what they did with her thinking about Sensei, aka Aqua, given that, you know, obviously we know he was reborn into Aqua's body there. But ultimately, you know, the idea of like, when she was old enough as a kid to try to check in, you know, well, Sensei went missing. And, you know, it's obviously very sad, but she's hoping wherever he is, whether up there or wherever he is across the globe, is looking down and, you know, supporting her. But the best part was what they did with the person making their original song. So this is a all-star, I think they said he was 45 in the subs. So the idea that he's pretty much done all he can do. And the idea of, a, it's not like, it's kind of this interesting burnout of, nothing makes sense and he's pretty much just going in circles like he wants to make this song but he's like what can he produce that he hasn't already done before and then ruby's video comes in and you see how she lights it up and is so excited for him that after seeing the face of the person that he's going to be making music for it gives him that kind of spark of inspiration that immediately just changes his course and gives him that creativity back i really like those moments and you know despite clearly my mind the whole episode thinking is the dad dead are they bamboozling us is he actually it's like that was clearly still going in my mind the whole damn time but i also really enjoyed what they did with the ruby stuff and just kind of like the little setups that they've done just a really good episode i mean tokyo blade arc has seemingly come to an official end and it will be interesting to see if a season three at any point can top what we got with this arc because this was such a good freaking arc like it was next level enjoyment and unlike a lot of shows that have either come back this season or over the past year with their second season and maybe didn't live up to the quality and hype of season one Oshinoko season two did even better in my opinion we still have some episodes left of course but like for me what they've done with this arc and this season I just think it surpassed my own expectations and enjoyment that season one laid out. And you honestly can't say that a lot recently for a lot of sequels that are coming back. Granted, we didn't have that long of a turnaround, which definitely helped. But, uh, you know, we didn't get done dirty. And you can't say that too often these days with a lot of these anime. Let me know what you're thinking, though, uh, down below. Uh, please, no spoilers. I'm sure there's going to be some people acting like they aren't manga readers and they're anime onlys. But you, you know the people I'm talking about theories if you got any what's your uh what's your gut impression i'm saying he faked it like that's that's where i'm leaning most is like it's a it's a fake double suicide but i'm welcome to be proven wrong let me know your thoughts down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here of course ring that bell and like i mentioned we have full live reactions over on patreon and hey while you're over there i'll just give you a video shout out all right so today we got a barrett tommy jameson davin kyle call ten crazy Juan he austin fernand rookie Omega Alpha 83, and we also have Winter Naomi Vera. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. You all have a good one.